Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here today with Andrew McIntyre, CIO of Vinix Sports Group, uh, which of course is the IT company for the Tampa Bay Lightning and Amelie Arena. But it's more than that, though. So can you just give us a quick bio on yourself and uh, what your responsibilities are here? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Vinix Sports Group, we're the parent company of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, we also operate uh, Amelie Arena. Um, which has about 120 to 140 events per year. So not just the hockey games, but we also do uh, plenty of other events, concerts, Concert, but also yeah. things like Disney on Ice. We got the Men's Frozen Four coming up. Um, That's we, exciting. Yeah, very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Uh, we we uh, had the pleasure of hosting the Toronto Raptors uh, during COVID. Um, so that was an exciting time for us because uh, we got to a little bit of a taste of the NBA season and what that looks like. Uh, and then we have other things, the men's and women's NCAA, uh, whether it's women's basketball or even rounds of, uh, of March Madness. So definitely an active building and, and always keeps us on our toes. So then the other thing that uh, Vinic Sports Group does is we take our skill sets that we've learned here and, and really build expertise in and we extend those to the region. So we have relationships with the University of South Florida, their athletic department, and we run the Yingling Center, which is where they play men's and women's basketball and volleyball. Uh, we have a relationship with Embark Collective, which is an innovation hub here in Tampa, really focused on technology startups. So we run that facility for them. And then we are a part of an entertainment district uh, that is built around uh, with uh, Strategic Property Partners, which is a joint venture between our owner, Jeff Minnick, and uh, Cascade Investments. So it's a uh, multi-year, uh, around 55-acre development in downtown Tampa, uh, entertainment district, residential, commercial, really a place that you can live, uh, you can work, and you can play. And so we're kind of right in the middle of it from an entertainment uh, standpoint. Uh, so it's really exciting that we can be a part of all these things that are happening within the region. Yeah. All right, Andrew, now that the rap concert's over, uh, we can uh, pick up here the interview. Um, now, one of the things about the Lightning is you're renowned for having a great fan experience, right? And that fan experience extends everywhere from outside to inside to, you know, to digital experience. And so uh, let's think of those in phases. So talk first about the outside experience. When people yeah, come sure. here, what do they expect? Um, well, as you said, we really try to take the fan experience out to the edge. So as soon as you get on our campus, we want to start to engage you. In fact, you've been a top five experience team for long time right yeah. many many yeah, years yeah, yeah. And, that, and a lot of that is really the uh, kind of the craftsmanship and the expertise of, of our VP of game presentation Jan, uh, John Franzone uh, leader in the industry has been he's been doing this for a long time does an amazing job and so we take a lot of cues from him and obviously us we're trying to deliver the technology to let him to to really execute at a high level but on the outside side a couple of key things that we've done is uh, we've really extended our audio system all the way out to the edge and allow them to engage whether it's messaging or just you know uh, pre-entry pump-up music we also have uh, partnered up with Cigar City a local brewery around here um, so we have a nice tap room that you can have a beverage if you want before you come in. And then there's a very much a big ceremony right before you actually open the doors and, and let the fans in. Yeah, I know you hear Thunderstruck here a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, 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 you, gotta, yeah. you gotta hear that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, and then what we've recently done is um, to really uh, help with the ingress process is we've adopted some new technology, uh, specifically around frictionless screening. So instead of having to divest and work through a magnetometer, and then if there's a problem, get like a wand to wave you out to find out where the problem might be and resolve it. Um, frictionless screening allows you to just do a straight walk through. So it's really sped up our ability to get people into the building very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, cool. just, yeah, <laughs> not just, not <laughs> just Tesla coils go off. Yeah. Um, the, uh, but get them into the building so they can enjoy all the other products and services of the arena. So whether that's your F&B, whether that's uh, with our retail, or just walking the building and seeing all the great things that we have to offer. Yeah, and then so once you're in the arena, what's that experience like? Yeah, and, so, we get, and we're getting a little bit of it here. But, oh yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I think there's always gonna be a big emphasis on our fan experience because obviously most teams, uh, and we're currently at a high point in our performance on the ice, uh, you really wanna maximize that high. Um, but we also know that, like all sports teams, uh, they go through waves and sometimes the performance on the on the ice could suffer and so we want to make sure that the experience here is so strong that you're going to come whether the team is winning or losing uh, because we're putting on such a great show and so in the building we're always focused on what well, you know what do you see what do you hear uh, what do you feel what do you smell 
And so a big part of us is, is that uh, our video board experience. Uh, at the time, we were the largest video board installed in the arenas. Of course, you know, that always gets eclipsed over yes. time. Yeah. But at the time, that was really exciting for us. Uh, we're going to be doing some video board upgrades over the next couple of years. Um, this upcoming off season, we're implementing a brand new PA system. So we're going to be elevating our audio experience. Uh, what I would call bringing a little bit more of the thunder uh, and let it like rattle the bones a little bit and more information to come on that. Uh, but then the sights and smells and that's really elevating our, our F&B experience. Um, specifically on that, we know that the F&B experience oh, yeah. needs to be really good high quality food, but it also needs to be quick and convenient so that you can get back to your seat as quick as possible, especially in, on the intermissions. And yeah. so we've, uh, we've gone cashless uh, in the arena. We've adopted a brand new mobile application and the mobile wallet capabilities allow us to do single scan for uh, applying your discounts, applying any loaded value that we've rolled out to you, as well as then uh, completing the rest of the transaction if there happens to be a remaining balance. So really exciting there. Last piece on the F&B side, a lot of the, I'll call it self-checkout, uh, great technology solutions like Mastion allows you to take your grab and go items, put them on, scan very quickly, one scan to get out, and then you're back into your seat. So really trying to speed up that process because those windows are tight. We want to serve as many people as possible and make sure they're back in their seats watching that game. And I've heard you use the phrase uh, technology is a revenue generator, which is counter to the way most people think of, of the IT department, right? And so I assume what you're talking about there contributes to that. What other ideas do you have that, that you know, really can help companies take this thing that was a cost center and make it a profit center. Yeah, sure. So to that point, you know, I, I always try to go against the grain of we're not a cost center, we're revenue enablement. And then in the scenario that we can Do your bosses believe that though? That's the important well, thing. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, I personally believe everyone's yeah. in sales, whether you're selling technology or you're selling to get more investment. Um, so even though I'm a technologist by heart, I still have to sell to get the funds that I need yes, to move forward. Yeah. But the investments I make can directly impact how we drive revenue. So if I can speed up uh, the transaction at concessions line, I know that's going to drive more revenue. And normally the way you're doing that is through technology. So whether that's self-checkout, whether that's through mobile wallet, some of those pieces are going to enable more revenue to be generated. Um, the generation side of the house is how do we use technology to help drive more funds into the building? And that's where there's technologies that are out there uh, that you can kind of, I would call it, change the experience and then incite those technology companies that want to provide that revenue or that um, income to the house, which we can then reinvest into other aspects of the building. Oh, that's and so that, that's a really yeah. key piece for us is you got to kind of change your mindset a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, so the, uh, the big initiative, I think, for a lot of sports CIOs and the 800 pound gorilla, I guess, that's in this room, is online gambling or is uh, sports betting, right? It's been legalized in maybe 10 states now. Right, sounds about and right. It, and it's uh, it's coming to every state eventually, though, which seems like it puts uh, just a completely different level of expectations on at least the network experience than what one was used to. So that's right. How are you thinking about that, and how are you preparing for that? Yeah. So so to your point, it hasn't passed here in Florida, but we want to be able to take advantage it's of coming. it as soon as yeah, it passes. Yeah, yeah. And so heavy investment into our wired and wireless infrastructure um, on the cellular side of the house. Uh, we were fortunate during COVID that construction was considered an essential service. So we took that time and invested in the building and we expanded our DAS um, infrastructure to take on Verizon and T-Mobile. They had some legacy systems that were kind of cobbled together in the past. We brought them onto our state-of-the-art DAS. You know, we are the first arena in uh, North America to deploy the Matsing RF lens antenna to provide full coverage for our 4G LTE system. So we were really excited to bring on board those other two carriers and really have great service for any um, carrier that's out there. And then more recently, we've just uh, overlaid 5G across AT&T and Verizon as well. So we believe that you know, you, by the time you walk in this building, you need to have great cellular infrastructure and, and, and service. And so we want to make sure that people just can immediately begin, whether it's betting or interacting with our exclusive content or transacting, that everyone can be seamless right from the get-go. Yeah. And then the companion to that is the Wi-Fi system. Of course. So we use it yeah. a lot for the operational runs that we run the building, but also it's a great offload for individual customers, not necessarily because their cellular isn't working, because we know that's not going to be the case, but more in the sense that, hey, maybe they have a, uh, a tough data plan that they want to offload and, and leverage us for data. Mm. We're happy to do that for them as well. And do more people use Wi-Fi or cellular? Uh, right now, at least our numbers are indicating a lot more on the cellular side. Um, and again, we kind of look at Wi-Fi as the companion. So it's there if they need it, but we, we don't expect people to, to jump over or 
We don't want their first action when they jump into the arena to be like, where's the Wi-Fi system? Yeah. It should just be is just enjoy the building. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's interesting. But cellular has come so far, right? Five years ago, we weren't saying that. Or it's get on Wi-Fi because cellular wasn't very good. But uh, that's completely been upgraded. So That is exactly right. Yeah, so now that you're doing mobile wallet, you're thinking about betting, right? You're uh, having people come in the arena through these scanners and stuff. You're capturing a lot of data. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there that worry about security, right? The, the amount of information you have on them, it's pretty significant. So how do you keep up with all the trends and what are you doing in the area to make sure fans are secure? Yeah, so I think there's a couple things that we do on that front. I think it's really important to partner with others in the space and really the experts. So one of the things that we always do is, is we reach out to our NHL CISO, and I've also reached out to my former league, the MLB CISO, oh. to review our cybersecurity posture, specifically our roadmap, and make sure that they're weighing in on, hey, Andrew, if, if you have this slated as your next project, maybe you should bump this one up in priority, really to make sure that we're moving down that path as quick as possible. The other thing that we do is we partner with really great managed service providers to assist us as well. Like, like most sports teams, we have a very small organization, so it's important to partner with those MSPs uh, because they can provide the extra manpower, that extra exper expertise, and then we really work in harmony with them. They're gonna do a lot of our tier, tier one, a lot of our monitoring, and then when they see something that needs to be acted on, whether they can't do it automated, uh, we might need to take action here physically in the building or at any of our facilities themselves. Mm. So those are a couple of things that we do. And, you know, I don't think we're necessarily unique in what we're doing, but we also know that every club needs to be protected because if one club gets impacted, there's a good chance the entire league gets impacted. Yeah, so certainly. we got to keep up with, with e Even else. if it's just a perception, right? That That's exactly it, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So, so that makes sense to me. Now, we talked about fan experience. Uh, of course, you're an organization, you have employees. Mm -hmm. And so uh, employee experience has gone through a pretty significant shift you know, since COVID. People yep. working from home, people coming back in. Uh, I know you recently went through Unified Communications project with Ring Central. That's right. Uh, how did that go and what do you use that for? Yeah, so, you know, luckily we were able to execute that project right before COVID hit. So that was back in uh, Q4 of 2019. Yeah. So you did um, that pre-pandemic, right? We did it pre-pandemic. Yeah, that was yeah, very, so that very, was, that very was, forward looking <laughs> at you. A <laughs> little bit of luck in yeah, that one, yeah, but yeah. thank God we did. Um, you know, part of it for us is, you know, historically speaking, we had not really equipped our associates with tools for mobility and then really communication. And so... Uh, as we started to see our business grow and expand outside of just the arena, we knew that we're going to have to provide them better tools to stay connected to the organization, to communicate with one another, and then be productive. And so two projects that we kicked off, one was Unified Communications, uh, and happy to have that done in late Q4. Uh, we partnered up with Ring Central, uh, really excited about the partnership there with their platform, uh, meeting our needs and even extending even beyond that. Uh, and then partnering with one of the really good service uh, integrators out there, Converge Technology Pros, which if anyone's ever looking for an integrator, hmm. I cannot speak enough great things about Joe and his team. Yeah. Uh, but then the second thing that we did is we knew that we needed to equip our people with better tools, specifically around mobility. So older organization, kind of the mindset was more desktops, you come to the office, sit in your office. Well, you know, luckily we started the hardware refresh process and then upgrading everybody to basically laptops. So the idea was you could work from anywhere, whether it's at home, whether it's at the arena, whether it's at Yingling Center, Imbar Collective, anywhere you go, you can be productive. You can tie back to services here through our VPN or like most of our uh, applications, they're in the cloud. So it's really just being able to, you know, really execute your job wherever you do. Well, you can to. say it's lucky, but you got to be good to be lucky, I suppose. So I think <laughs> well, people say that, people say that about the hockey team too, right? So <laughs> it was always good, you know, puck yeah. goes the right way every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but on the hardware side, I mean, I will say we started that project, but our approach was a refresh and take down about a quarter of the fleet, like every year. So even oh. though we started it in nineteen, we were about halfway through in twenty, and then the pan pandemic hit. So. Like us and a lot of other yeah. folks, we were working our way through it as quick as possible to try to make sure everybody was as productive as they could be. All right, well in your business, like every business, uh, your job isn't done today, right? Yep. You've done a lot of upgrades to create this great experience. What are you thinking about looking ahead? Sure, um, so a couple things that, again, some of it ties back to uh, sports betting. Uh, and then other things of just experiential that we think are going to be really exciting. I think eventually everything's going to tie back to sports. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things that we've been doing, uh, started the experimenting, um, and specifically around in arena audio streaming. And we think this is really important because it provides a little bit of personalization. So what do you want to listen to? Do you want to listen to uh, lightning radio and listen to that as the game's going on? Um, we could also listen to our RSN and specifically their feed versus what's happening inside the bowl. 
But where we see it going, and specifically back to betting, is, is specifically an audio channel dedicated to betting and sports odds. So I think it's really hard to be staring at your phone and then looking at the game and understanding when you're going to place your bet. But if you can listen to it, you know, something in your ear about how the odds are changing, identifying different ways that you might be wanting to place a bet, then take action, I think there's a little bit more chance that that's going to be successful. So you could, in theory, get real-time prop bets. That's exactly right. Wow, that's, yes. a, that's amazing. So really excited about that because I think the technology is here to deliver that audio, but now it's obviously the betting odds and all of that information has got to come. So to support that, the next thing that's happening that we're using across really three different areas is, uh, is what they call puck and player tracking data. Um, this is a new technology being rolled out across the league. Uh, it's an RFID in the jerseys as well as the puck. Uh, effectively, what it's doing is creating more information than we've ever seen before. And we think this has really big changes with regards to the fan experience as you look at next-gen stats. Very similar to what you see on, in Major League Baseball. Yeah, uh, like Santa Saber, yeah. Metrics, yeah. and Moneyball. It's kind of like that's what's happening in hockey. But then I also think it's going to impact our hockey operations as it looks at player evaluations and on-ice strategies. And then uh, really the last thing is a lot of that data can then be used and how does that funnel into sports betting as well. Yeah. Because now you're going to get uh, stats and odds and information that you haven't seen before. So, you know, that has implications of when do you want to place those bets. That's a lot of information you've got to be compiling, whether it's in your ear, on the phone, on the video boards, uh, to be able to feel comfortable about the bets that you're making moving yeah. forward. So if Kucherov's ice time was down for whatever reason and you notice their best defenseman's time is up, maybe you place a bet on Now's him Now's the time goal. to say yeah. he's probably going to get an assist or, or yeah. load it up himself. Oh, that's, well, that, well, that's fascinating that analytics be used that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really excited about it. We're starting to test it. You know, one of the things that we'll have in Fort Thunder Alley, we do have a very large laser projector that we push the game out to kind of bring those people on the outside in. Um, we'll have live game and we'll run that PPT data there so they can see the time on ice in real time. Uh, what those, you know, when is it time to put the pressure on or keep those guys on the ice and make sure it doesn't leave, um, leave our side of the attack zone. Um, but then we also do it in the arena as well. So we're rolling it across IPTV, we're rolling it across different little uh, activation spaces across the I don't think the players like being tracked that much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how everyone, like anything else, the more information you have yeah. sometimes is a good thing. To improve, improves their performance, that's great. And then obviously, because there's obviously implications on what that can mean for their own um, well-being, if you will, yeah. contractually speaking. All right, Andrew, well, thanks for giving me an update here on the technology and sports. Let's have a little fun, though. Sure. Uh, playoffs are right around the corner, right? Full disclosure, I'm from Boston. <laughs> the Bruins are in first place by a mile, right? But Tampa's three-time Stanley Cup champion, a couple pretty recently, too, right? So That's right. Three uh, Stanley Cups the last three years. Yeah. Or Stanley Cup finals, I should say. Yeah. Two Stanley Cups. Yeah. yeah. And so what are your predictions this year? Does the team, is it making a run? Is it uh, the Bruins' time? Um, you know, the Bruins are a really, really good team. They've done a lot of great things and in, in how they've built their team for this season and, and what they've done at the trade deadline. Um, but, you know, our guys, uh, we have a great core. Uh, I think we have the best goalie in hockey. And so if we're healthy, we're playing well, uh, I wouldn't count us out. Yeah, well, that's the answer I'd expect you to give. So, <laughs> all right, Andrew, well, thanks for that uh, overview of what you're doing here and uh, a look ahead and what's coming in technology and sports. Appreciate the time. Yeah, and if thanks you're for having me. If you're watching, uh, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another ZCast.